All right, great. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone wherever you're dialing in from around the world. Uh, thanks for joining us today for the Kraken hosted webinar presentation featuring ICON. My name is Pete Hummiston. I'm a research analyst here on the Kraken Intelligence team. And today I have the pleasure of chatting with Min Kim, the founder of the ICON project and council member of the ICON Foundation, as well as Ricky Dodds, the head of institutional markets at ICON Foundation. Just as a quick reminder, ICON is a South Korean-based blockchain project aiming to hyperconnect the world. ICON is a decentralized network that allows independent blockchains with different governances to transact with one another without intermediaries. ICON's enterprise blockchain implementation, um, ICON Loop, or what was formerly known as Loop Chain, is one of the oldest and largest operating blockchain networks in the world and is currently used by some of the largest and most well-known companies in South Korea and surrounding regions including major universities, governments, hospitals, banks, and other financial services firms. The ICON uh, token powers the ICON network and acts as a medium of exchange. It can also be used to reward community contributors of the network and pay for smart contract fees. Owners of the ICON token also have the option to stake their tokens and delegate support to representatives of the network, new network initiatives, and even dApps. So uh, a quick little bit about our speakers here. Min Kim is the founder of the ICON project and has 15 years of experience in the financial and technology industry. Prior to ICON, Min was chief strategy officer of the Daily Financial Group, Korea's largest fintech holding company, um, and was the COO uh, at Tapas Media, which is a US digital content distribution platform. Min started his career at Deutsche Bank's technology investment banking division in San Francisco. Last but not least, we've got uh, Ricky here, who is bringing more than seven years of experience as an investment banker and equity research analyst at Deutsche Bank, where he covered financial institutions. At Deutsche, uh, Ricky co-authored one of the first institutional research reports on cryptocurrencies for Deutsche's corporate clients, entitled Cutting Through the Noise of Cryptocurrencies. Prior to that, Ricky worked, as a corporate, uh, worked in corporate development at a de novo bank and as an analyst at a later stage uh, growth venture capital firm. Just as a couple quick reminders here too, before we kick off, after the presentation, we're gonna have some time to ask Min and Ricky some questions. So please feel free to post under the Q&A tab at the bottom of the Zoom screen at any point. Um, as a reminder, your questions will not be visible to any other attendees, just uh, the three of us here. We'll try and get through as many questions as possible within the hour. Um, and then lastly, just as a reminder, the Kraken webinar presentation is not an endorsement, recommendation, or investment advice of the ICON platform or the ICON token. Kraken does not make recommendations on the suitability of a particular asset class, strategy, or course of action. All right, now that we've got all that out of the way, Min and Ricky, how are you guys doing today? You ready to take it away? Yeah, yeah. thank you, P. That was a great introduction, really appreciate it. Perfect, thanks. All right, very nice to meet everyone. Uh, very excited to be here today. Uh, today, we prepared a very comprehensive uh, presentation on the ICOM project and just the background of everything that's going on with our project here. So I will just move along and start with the first ICON highlights. I believe that these five highlights is what it takes to create a very successful decentralized network. And ICON has all the components necessary to make this project a very big success. Uh, first of all, we have a very, very strong core team. I believe we have one of the strongest teams in the crypto space today. Second, our market leadership is very, very strong. Especially people have started calling us the Ethereum of Korea. But today, after a couple of years, we're moving much beyond that. Third, our technology. We are very unique that we've built our technology from ground up. There are a lot of projects that are out there that have forced Ethereum that uses other technologies that was pre-built, which is pretty cool as well. But uh, we pride our, in ourselves that we have the ability to create our own technology and contribute in this space. Fourth, our community and governance is very, very amazing. We have uh, one of the most dedicated communities out there. And we are in the process of decentralization, which means that we are in the process of handing off our governance of our network to our community. And that's been a very, very fun and exciting process. Last but not least, adoption. Um, from the very beginning, we've been focusing on adoption. 
Uh, we've worked with one of the largest enterprises in South Korea, along with the uh, government, such as so much Politan government. Uh, but things are even getting more exciting with the decentralization process, as I mentioned, where we have uh, people and groups and companies from all around the world ready to uh, be a validator of our network. And they've been adding and contributing to our network's growth. As I mentioned, our core team, I'm very proud to say that we've been working together for a number of years. Uh, as you can see from our uh, bios here, I've highlighted in red that we've all come from uh, Daily Financial Group, which is the largest fintech holdings company in South Korea. Uh, Daily Financial Group was mentioned in FinTech 100 report in 2018, which was prepared by KPMG and H2 Ventures. Uh, on that one of the pages, uh, you can see that I've highlighted that Icon was uh, one of the uh, was the only company that was mentioned or the only project that was mentioned on this report. Um, so we're very proud to say that. So we've been working together for a very long time, and we believe that we have all the necessary components, as I mentioned, to make this project a success. Just to cover some of our history here. Um, so in 2015, early 2015, our executives came together and we've um, received about $100 million in equity funding, not token, but equity. And we've gone out there and we acquired about 20 startups, including CoinOne Cryptocurrency Exchange. This is where we actually learned a lot about uh, the future of Bitcoin and the technology behind Bitcoin, which is the blockchain technology. We thought it was so important enough to start and start doing research and start investing into this technology. So we set up a company called Icon Loop. Previously, it was called The Loop. Soon, due to our very strong network and connection, we've been able to uh, lead one of the largest consortiums in South Korea with COFIA, which is a Korean Financial Investment Association, with 27 securities firms or brokerages um, as members. Uh, when we saw that our technology could be applied to create a massive network in Asia and we had the unique technology to and capable capabilities capability to achieve that we went out there and we've set up the icon foundation in Switzerland with uh, the most prominent uh, legal firm MME uh, which has led ethereum Tezos and all, all the other big projects in out in Switzerland we were able to attract uh, one of the largest investors, uh, Pantera. Uh, we've closed 150,000 ETH uh, back in 2017. We were able to also attract Don Capscott, which who is a very prominent figure to uh, become one of our top advisors to the project. And immediately we've got gotten attention from um, you know companies like Binance, and obviously today we have. Kraken, uh, helping us to list in the U.S. exchanges and the European exchanges. We also partnered with Line, one of the largest uh, technology companies in Japan and in Southeast Asia, also uh, so metropolitan government. And as I go along, we will talk more about some of the biggest partners that we work with and some of the real, real world implications or applications of our technology. So, as I mentioned, we've set up the ICON Foundation, but what the ICX token actually um, powers is the ICON network. And ICON Foundation is one of the um, many components that go, in, go into making the ICON network very successful. ICON Foundation started off as the necessary piece of building out the ICON network by um, helping with the token sale and also coming up with the roadmap and also um, helping to build some of the necessary pieces such as accelerators that's uh, all around the world. So today we have an accelerator in Korea, US, Japan, and also in Singapore. And Unchain, as I mentioned, we have a joint venture with Line Corporation, the largest messaging service in Southeast Asia. So we have a lot of interesting uh, research and development happening with that uh, joint venture. And within the past two years, we've been able to apply a, a lot of our learnings with Daily Financial Group. 
uh, daily, with Daily Financial Group, we've actually built one of the largest or and the most successful fintech holdings company in South Korea by being able to attract some of the top talent. We've grew from zero employees to 800 employees in two years with millions of dollars in revenue. Similarly, we're applying the same methodology and logic uh, to the ICOM project. And immediately we were able to grow our team within the past two years to over 150. Um, so we have like a very, very strong development team from some of the top universities and top companies in Asia. Of course, it took a lot of um, learning curve in order to train these employees to what they are today. But we believe that we have the strongest technical team with, the, with years and years of experience. And this is what it's all about today is uh, real world adoption. Uh, and that's what ICON is all about. And that's what we've been about from the very beginning. Um, as you can see, these are some of the um, press releases or uh, media releases that we've had. Uh, some of the headliners, we work with uh, Seoul Metropolitan Government. Uh, Seoul Metropolitan is using the ICON technology to actually uh, create digital certification on the ICON network. So this has started as a POC in the very beginning, but we're in the process of actually uh, commercializing this pro product, not only for Seoul Metropolitan Government, but for many, many government departments and also private enterprises in Korea. So there'll be, we believe that we have a very, very strong use case uh, and adoption by using this digital, digital certification application. Uh, most recently, we've had a, one of our products called MyID, a decentralized ID, which was approved by the FSC, which is equivalent of SEC of, in the U.S. Uh, so we got approved to be in a fintech sandbox to use this decentralized ID. Third, we, on the right, uh, as I mentioned, we've launched a joint venture with uh, Line a Corporation. Uh, this was a couple years ago. And... As you can see, Forbes uh, has also mentioned that uh, due to our success within the fintech space and with our strong network, uh, we've been able to push out an article that actually, um, you know, had a very, very strong case that ICON could be the blockchain that connects all of South Korea. Uh, because we've been doing so much work in not only the security space, but also uh, healthcare space and the university space. A lot of these are still very early. And to be honest, they have years to go, but we have this very, very strong relationship that we believe could, we could uh, make this uh, adoption happen in South Korea in, into the future. So to kind of give you a quick summary of uh, some of our key clients that we've been working with. Um, so ICON obviously is the largest blockchain net network in South Korea and one of the largest in all of, uh, all of the world. Uh, we have a very good relationship with uh, 26 securities firms and we lead the largest um, consortium in South Korea. Kyobo Life is the largest insur insurance company in South Korea. So we've been able to do different types of POCs with them. Uh, one of the products is actually in the commercialization by automating insurance claims today. So Metropolitan Government is another uh, very interesting um, client of ours, and we've been not only working on digital certification, but many, many other projects as well. And of course, we have Line, SK Planet, Samsung Pass. Uh, these are all large clients of ours that we believe that we have a very, very uh, good relationship with, and we want to be able to push our uh, blockchain forward. And some also uh, some quick, um, uh, you know, we've been, as I mentioned, we've been very strong with enterprise adoption. Uh, we work with some of the largest banks as well. As you can see, Uri Bank is a, is a very large bank in Korea. Nonghyuk Bank uh, is a very close uh, companion of our, uh, partner of ours. And obviously these are all um, history of our track record that we have been very, very successful in our home domain in South Korea. And what makes ICON very unique is that uh, not only do we play in, in the enterprise space, so in Korea, for example, we compete directly with 
hyperledger in Korea, but we've been able to be a lot more successful because not only we have the technology and the engineering team in South Korea, but we have the consulting team in Korea as well. So we've been able to move a lot faster and we've been able to uh, meet our client demands a lot faster as well. But what makes Icon even uh, value proposition even more attractive for our clients is that we do everything from one to A to Z. Uh, not only do we play in the private space, we also have knowledge in the public space. And obviously, uh, interoperability is our, our end game, uh, our end focus. And we believe that we have like a very, very strong uh, roadmap in order to make interchain and interoperability possible uh, in uh, globally with not only the ICON network, but with our partners across the globe. And now I'll turn it over to Ricky Dawes. Thanks, man, and thanks again, everyone, for joining. So over the next uh, few slides, I'm gonna walk through some of the more unique characteristics of the ICON network. And if I breeze through any particular topic, feel, feel free to ask a question at the end of the presentation, and I'll uh, be happy to provide additional color. So I think to start, I just wanna reemphasize our strength in the Korean market. I know it's not listed on this slide, but uh, to not highlight it, I think would be a disservice to the project. And that said, um, there's some other sort of key differentiators of the blockchain platform that I think are worth noting. Uh, first, um, so we're a, a third generation smart contract platform, uh, proprietary design uh, to scale and handle enterprise throughput. So like Min has mentioned a couple of times, we, we have a strong reputation as a technology leader among corporates in Korea, and our technology has been tested uh, across a number of different industries. We're also a project that was born out of sort of the necessity uh, for interoperability. And this goes back to our early conversations with corporations several years ago when they were poking around with blockchain technology. Uh, and a major concern was uh, the sort of inability to uh, transfer value and data and information across business lines or in our industry. So we'll continue to devote significant resources to the development of interchain technology. Um, another differentiator uh, for the ICON uh, network is the improvements we've made on developer and user experience. I'll touch on these points in a few uh, more slides. And then lastly, our incentive and governance design, I feel is best in class for aligning uh, all economic incentives for all of our stakeholders and limiting some of the issues you've seen with uh, voter apathy and DPOS networks. So as I noted uh, previously, our, our proprietary uh, loop fault tolerance based blockchain was uh, designed using the same technology used to power our enterprise applications. Uh, these features include fast finality, we have one confirmation, two second block times, and high throughput capabilities. The, the network is also multi channel and modular to meet uh, demands for specific clients. Just recently, we conducted a transaction challenge to stress test our, our technology and our network capabilities. This slide uh, shows uh, trans transaction volumes over a specific period. As you can see, we surpassed Ethereum on this, uh, on this uh, snapshot. But in reality, the purpose was to, to stress our network for high volumes ahead of uh, commercialized uh, enterprise applications. And the platform performed very, very well. So as I mentioned on the summary slide, the ICON project was really born out of the need for interoperability among corporate clients at ICON Loop. Um, so, so what is interoperability in blockchain? So I kind of break it into three buckets. Uh, the first would be value transfer. So transferring coins or tokens from one blockchain uh, to another to access a particular community or application or service. Um, this could be like a, atomic swaps, for example. Then you have a, a separate uh, use as a service invocation or sort of data sharing where you can execute a smart contract on one blockchain and then share that result on another. So this would be like a public blockchain interacting with an enterprise or government blockchain. And then lastly, you could think about interoperability as a layer two solution or sort of a scalability solution for a base layer protocols. So at ICON, we're, we're currently focused on the value transfer among two loop chain blockchains, so a private to private implementation of token transfers. And this POC result will be released in the coming weeks. Um, later this year, we expect to announce an enterprise to public blockchain implementation. And then early next year, 
we expect to have outlined the CREP, the layer, economic incentive, and governance role. So I'll circle back on uh, developer and user-friendly environment. So another key uh, focus area for the foundation is improving the experience uh, for all stakeholders utilizing our network. We've designed a few some neat, unique characteristics that are laid out on this page. Uh, I'll go through each in uh, sort of brief detail. The first is uh, DBP or a DAP booster program. The, uh, the incentive for the DAP booster program will reward the top 20 or top 100 DAPs in the ICON network uh, by a portion of the block rewards based on their ranking. Um, and a higher rank will be achieved uh, by receiving more votes from ICON token holders. We think this provides clear incentives uh, to build uh, as an early adopter and a clear feedback loop to developers uh, from the community uh, on what they're interested in using. So we think this is a novel approach and hopefully uh, will sort of drive adoption of specific applications that our specific community is interested in using. The second is EEP or Ecosystem Expansion Project. Um, within this, our community members will be able to propose and implement projects on items such as network development, education, investments, community expansion, and then earn a portion of block rewards to execute these efforts. Um, if anyone is familiar with uh, the Decred project and their Palladia system, this will be uh, comparable to that, but in my view, a little bit more dynamic given it's entirely community driven and DAO like, and there's no gatekeeper. And then lastly is uh, Fee 2.0. Um, so this is just a flexible fee structure uh, whereby uh, DAP and users could go the traditional route where the user would pay uh, gas fees on like an Ethereum, they would pay ICX fees to, to use uh, an application, but they can also uh, provide fee sharing uh, where they can uh, basically uh, subsidize uh, transaction costs for their users and also earn virtual step, which is a way to allow for frictionless and enhanced user experience. The next slide focuses on uh, ICON's governance design. So the governance design is really driven by the IISS, the incentive scoring system. And it was designed to encourage contribution from the community. Unlike a lot of platforms, uh, token holders on the ICON network will be economically incentivized to govern the network with logic built directly into the protocol. So therefore, there, there's no need for off-chain payment structures to incentivize voters like you see on some other DPO net networks, um, Tron, for example. Um, so currently, uh, ICONS can uh, stake and delegate uh, to PREP uh, elections and are receiving a 24% annualized return for uh, this action. So, the governance mechanism overall is, is called delegated proof of comp contribution. It's just a, uh, a slight derivative of DPOS, but um, we really want to reward those who are contributing the most to the network right now um, and provide early adopter incentives uh, for operation, building, and growing the ecosystem. Um, another sort of interesting point about our uh, block rewards and the governance system is the block rewards are dynamic and they are based on percentage of network stake. So, uh, for example, right now, the percentage of network stake is uh, on the lower end. So, therefore, uh, the security of the ICON network is uh, a little bit weaker. So, the network is paying an increased reward rate to encourage more people to stake and secure the network. And conversely, when uh, the percentage of network stake is high, the network will lower the reward weight to encourage holders to use their ICX for other things. And you know, given this design, it's likely uh, that the, the protocol will be disinflationary over time. Uh, nodes uh, will operate on fixed cost, um, so we shouldn't expect a significant ramp up in cost for operating a PREP. And then there is a potentiality for ICON to become a deflationary economy over time as transaction fees are netted against block rewards. So there could be a point in time where transaction fees grow uh, to, sub, uh, to supplement the uh, inflationary needs to grow and expand the network. So 
the journey to mass adoption starts with iConsensus, uh, title of the slide. Um, so iConsensus is um, the first of four key items uh, within the ICON network. Um, so with the election of PREPs, uh, that's sort of the first step and that's to decentralize the network. Uh, the second step uh, will be the election of CREPs and that will, to, uh, that will accommodate uh, supporting interchain communication. And then uh, ongoing DBP funding and promoting of quality uh, decentralized applications and ongoing EEPs to incentivize activities to grow the ecosystem. You know, all of this is, is only possible through uh, our large and uh, enthusiastic uh, community and the election of the PREP is just uh, the first milestone in, in this uh, I consensus process. So as we mentioned, uh, decentralization will happen in October. Uh, 22 main PREPs and 78 sub PREPs will be elected. Um, decentralization is one of the, the core principles of ICON's governance and it can only be achieved through uh, the community uh, vote. So we're excited about the progress we've seen thus far. Uh, currently, 30% of circulating supply has voted uh, and we're seeing good participation growth week over week. Uh, we have a strong contingent of community-based node operators who we think are uh, will be even further incentivized to spread ICON's technology and brand uh, globally. In addition, we're seeing good participation from uh, a wide variety of actors in the space, including uh, funds, developer groups, staking as a service providers, and even university blockchain groups. Um, so PREPs will have the uh, distributed responsibility of uh, preserving the ICON network going forward, producing and verifying blocks, validating transactions, proposing and voting on uh, network policy changes, and then driving the ultimate growth of the uh, ICON ecosystem. And it's uh, something that we're very excited about. I'm gonna hand it back over to Min. So looking forward, um, we have in total three phases in our minds. Uh, the first phase, which the development phase is already completed, um, the, or almost complete, it will be completed this uh, October. Uh, the development of proprietary blockchain technology, the development of our business relationship with enterprises, and third, uh, the development of the ICON global community uh, has been um, you know, very fun and interesting experience. And <clears throat> today we, we pride in ourselves that we've built one of the most amazing communities out there. Decentralization is coming soon. Uh, we are very, very focused today on user engagement. How do we gamify uh, our community to be more active with the governments? Uh, we give rewards. We want to incentivize them to vote, and we want to incentivize them to take actions in um, creating and voting for different types of programs and, and building our network to the next step. Um, so for enterprises, we believe that um, more and more enterprises are getting ready to adopt our network. Um, Proof, the digital certif certificate, which I will uh, talk a little bit more about, has been, uh, has been growing very, very fast in the past uh, several months. So, and this is just in the beta stage today. Um, interoperability is uh, what we're shooting for. Um, we've already started the work with research and development. The ICON public network will be com directly compatible with not only our own private networks that is run on the ICON technology, but it will also be compatible with Ethereum and other third party public networks out there. And lastly, um, because ICON network is uh, used by so many other um, government organizations and enterprises and other networks, uh, we are going to integrate all of those other independent networks together with the ICOM network in the future and we'll be designing a new governance system that will rely on CREP governance. Here are two actual uh, services that we already launched today. That is, you could download on, um, on the Apple Store and also you could go online and, and check it out. Uh, a lot of these services are, are still in, in Korean because it is our uh, main market today. Uh, DPASS is a decentralized uh, identity service. Um, this has been, again, uh, we're trying to integrate with MyID, which has been 
approved by the FSC, the SEC equivalent of South Korea, to build a um, a national or even um, you know a, something that could replace KYC and AML requirements for financial institutions today. Uh, on the right, we have proof is a digital certificate. Still, we've learned that it's very interesting that so many organizations use uh, um, physical certificates such as graduation degrees or uh, certificates that is signed by mayor, mayor of, uh, of Seoul to give out to citizens. We're replacing all that with this product called proof. And this on the right hand side is a diagram that was um, created by one of our community members just to lay out so many so much activity that has been going on within the past couple of years. Uh, we're envisioning a world with many blockchains. Uh, in this world today, we have about 200 um, nations. Uh, of different governance and different governments uh, working together uh, for import exports and many different reasons. In the blockchain world, we believe that we're going to see something very similar. ICON may not be the largest blockchain, although we strive to be one of the best and most interesting blockchains out there. You know, we believe that we have all the necessary components, as I mentioned, to become one of the most valuable networks of tomorrow. So I'll leave it out here today. Uh, thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, we'll be, uh, we'll be happy to uh, answer some of them. Terrific. Thanks so much, Min and Ricky. That was great. Uh, lots of good info in there. Um, and we'll move into Q&A. Thanks in advance to everyone who submitted those questions. Um, as a reminder, if you have a question, feel free to submit via the Q&A um, button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. As a reminder, no one will, will be able to see your questions, just the three of us. Um, so feel free to ask away. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll kick it off here. So let's, uh, let's quickly talk about consensus mechanisms. Um, you know, I think that obviously in the, in the crypto space, consensus mechanisms is a, is a hot topic and, you know, oftentimes kind of center and, and core to a lot of projects. And one of, the, one of the things that I think is really interesting about, you know, ICON is the loop fault tolerance uh, consensus mechanism and it, and it's a proprietary uh, mechanism that uh, that you guys are using. You know, you had mentioned that you conducted a large scale development uh, contest. I, I believe it was called the Icon Transaction Challenge, and you were able to generate 60 million transactions in the course of 24 days, and and uh, seemingly had no issues there. You know, maybe if you could just quickly you know gloss over some of the you know particular reasons as to why you ultimately decided to go with this proprietary technology and. And perhaps are there any kind of you know shortcomings or, or areas of, of concern that um, you know you the team plans on addressing in the future just to to maximize scalability? Sure. I'll first start off with uh, loop fault tolerance. One correction there is that we are actually still in the process of development of the loop fault tolerance. This has been going on ongoing for the past several years um, because consensus mechanism or consensus algorithm is so important in, in the blockchain space. We wanted to spend more time in developing um, something that is an improvement of what is out there today. So LFT for short is another derivation of PBFT or practical uh, Byzantine fault tolerance. We develop LFT for five fast finality. So which is required by our enterprise clients. So when we talked to our enterprise clients, you know, what, what was out there wasn't good enough. So they wanted us to work with them to build something that was uh, faster, that could be more scalable. So that is when we uh, brought in some of the PhDs in order to develop something that could e easily, um, uh, that would not compromise uh, the network, but would give, um, better speed uh, and something that will be uh, much improvement to what it is out there today. But that's, that is another way for us to, I think, contribute to the greater blockchain industry where we believe that, you know, there needs to be more academic, academic research that goes into um, the actual technology aspect, not only just building out the token and the um, network aspect of it. And fast fin finality, um, also benefits the public blockchain. So we'll be using LFT not only for enterprise, but also for the public blockchain. 
Um, so we can get fast finality, uh, in essence, through reducing three phases, uh, the proposal, voting, and commit. Uh, currently, the PBFT is, um, I'll say, in, is, in short, is in three uh, steps. Um, it's very hard to explain uh, consensus mechanisms, but you could say that consensus mechanisms are, um, you work in different steps, and we're, we've been able to reduce about one step in order to make it a little bit faster. Um, we found a little bit of um, issue with the first version of LFT when we went through academia uh, uh, reviews. We've actually worked harder to develop this into a second version, which we call uh, Loop Fault Tolerance 2 or LFT2. This new version is currently under academic review uh, and will be, um, we believe it will take about three to four months in order to get this academic review completed. Once it passes, uh, we'll be able to implement starting next year. So we feel very comfortable with our research uh, so far. So around next year, we believe we'll be able to showcase um, the actual scalability that our, uh, the, the new algorithm that we'll be able to provide. Great, thanks for clarification, appreciate that. Um, one of the other things too that stands out for the ICON project that I think is you know, really interesting, I want, I want to drive this point home, is that you know, there's this really interesting um, hierarchy that's in place, this kind of separation of, of checks and balances that is somewhat similar to decentralized proof of stake, but it's, it's different in its own way too. Um, you know, can you walk us through what was kind of the, the thought behind having this particular hierarchy and and again, I want to drive this home because I think that there's a lot of really interesting incentives and, and this the project is structured in such a way that, you know, while you can have an impact on the project, uh, there is certainly, an, you know, an economic incentive to. And I think that you look at a few other different projects, I think you know, Maker, for example, example, stands out where, you know, you have this ability to participate in, and have an impact on the community, there's oftentimes kind of a, a hard um, push to do so. So can you kind of just frame up for us the, uh, the separation of power and the thought behind that? Sure, so <clears throat> a lot of this is covered uh, in our white paper where we've um, kind of laid out that when we first started this project, we looked at the hierarchies of real organizations that we work with today, so enterprises and government organizations. So we wanted to replicate a lot of these that's happening in the real world to the blockchain world as well. So we, in essence, didn't want to deviate from um, the, the way that things were already working because, you know, I think as a, as a, human, as a hu human history has shown through a lot of trial and errors, we've actually, uh, you know, continue to work on building better governance and better organizations um, today. And a lot of it has worked and we want to be able to retain some of that, of course. Uh, and we, we thought we wanted to replicate a lot of that. So um, when we work with these uh, enterprises, for example, um, they all want to initially work with their people that they are very comfortable working with. So we would use our technology to build networks for, for example, only the securities uh, industry. So security industry uh, members are interested and they're, um, they feel comfortable working with their own members, but you know, it's very difficult for them to work with, for example, allow uh, sole metropolitan government or even universities into their network today. In the future, they're, they are interested in exploring that opportunity or that option, but today uh, they've already set up a trade association called COFIA where they're already comfortable working in that uh, organization. So today, what we've built is that essentially a system that allows uh, independent um, networks to actually build their own governance systems. So we actually help to customize a lot of that, those networks. And that's not too different from, I believe, what Hyperledger and uh, IBM blockchain is doing today. Um, but in Korea, I think that's where we've been specializing in is we understand how uh, the culture of Korea has been working and how the government in Korea has been working. So we've been able to customize our system a little bit better than other organizations. 
Um, with that said, uh, we've developed what we call CREP. So in the future, we foresee uh, multiple blockchains interconnected and working together. So for example, we see an insurance consortium that is already uh, working with some of the fintech applications that's being built today. But they're not comfortable enough today to work directly include them into their blockchain network. Uh, but we believe that in the future, they have interest to interconnect those independent networks together in the future. So we believe that in order for that to happen, there's what we call a C-Rep, a community representative that could go out there that represents the entire, uh, you know, all other insurance companies and be able to strike a deal with other blockchain networks. That's similar to how the real, works, uh, real world works today. So in essence, there's many different parts that I'm, uh, kind of mentioning here, but in essence, uh, what we wanted to say is what I wanted to say is that we're not doing anything too different from how organizations are run today. Great, thanks. Um, one of the other things that you guys had pointed out in the past, which I think a few other projects haven't really acknowledged, is that the, you know the the mobile application support. Um, you know, can we briefly just turn our attention towards DPass and and can you give us an update where that stands? Is as, as this this offering been tested on any other projects and, and kind of what are the next steps there uh, um, as far as you know, pushing adoption and, and interest? Sure. So <clears throat> DPASS is a very new uh, project. As I, as somebody mentioned here, it's a sovereign identity, decentralized ID. It's been one of the hottest topics in the blockchain space. Uh, it's, it's very new. We have an application out that is you could download and you can use and it's currently directly connected to proof, which is digital certificate. <clears throat> so um, is it uh, the question is if you know, it's not really used in a massive scale as of today, but it is still in a beta stage, I would say, uh, where we're testing what digital cert certifications that we could actually uh, certify and put on the icon network so um, today uh, we have for example so metropolitan government that is issuing digital certificates what a you know if I'm the um, receiver of that digital certificate I would not only have a physical certificate but I will get a digital form which I could check with the DPASS uh, application um, but yeah so that's the current state at is today, we is in a working condition. It is uh, fully functional. Um, we're still waiting to add a, a bit more features and make it a little bit more user friendly. Uh, we have a sales team that's going out there, and we've have about, um, I believe, over fifty organizations that are ready to be onboarded to be using Proof. And through that, we will be able to also get users for the DPD pass as well. Terrific, thanks. Um, turning our attention to the DAP Booster program and the ecosystem expansion projects, which again, I think those are also you know these part of this incentive structure to really contribute to the to the overall ecosystem and and help uh, drive adoption and flourishment of the network. Could you just give us a quick rundown as far as how, you know how long that voting will exist and and what the kind of like time frames around those particular initiatives will look like going forward yeah so the dvp and evp programs will be live uh in the coming months we're currently uh designing the sort of web interface in order to uh, make that possible but as far as uh just the uh the release of rewards and like the ongoing voting process so there's going to be a sort of a two-step process one you will submit uh sort of your either a D app or your EEP, uh, and that will have to clear a certain quorum uh, based on community vote. Um, and once that's cleared, then uh, your EEP or DEPP will be able to start collecting uh, block rewards based on uh, the percentage delegation. So it'll be like a two step process to screen out uh, some of maybe the uh, uh, nefarious uh, actors trying to sort of game the system, but. Um, yeah, so the first process will be you submit an EEP DBP proposal. Uh, there's a vote for 30 days. If that vote passes, uh, you're uh, uh, then eligible for delegation. And at that point, you start to receive uh, block rewards based on your delegation rank. 
Great, thank you. You, you highlighted several different uh, you know, partnerships and, and relationships on the enterprise side um, of, the, of the network. Maybe could you briefly touch on you know, any kind of existing deals with the SEAL government or, or kind of upcoming programs? Is, is there anything that we should know on that front? So the thing about working with these enterprises and making an announcement or giving a little bit of more heads up with um, the development, it's been very difficult for us because uh, we don't control a lot of those timelines and announcement schedules. So in terms of like upcoming uh, developments and uh, news, uh, I'm sorry to say it's been, uh, we, we cannot share those at the moment. Totally understand, okay. Um, you, one of the central focuses of, of ICON, you know, is really kind of hyper-connecting the world. I think that, you know, the, the rollout of the project with the backing of, of the Daily Financial Group has obviously led to a lot of synergies. You know, there's a lot of existing relationships um, that, that the, the company has had that I'm sure has helped kind of contribute to the overall development and growth on the enterprise side. You know, are there any kind of, you know, plans going for, forward or in the future that will ultimately help kind of drive um, broader uh, adoption and interest in, in kind of the, the other surrounding regions or, or even perhaps the Americas? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, so, you know, to be very honest, we want to be very focused uh, in, our, in our strength, at least in the near term, especially in the enterprise space, which is South Korea. Uh, that's where a lot of our relationships lie. And we want to double down as much as possible in order to make that relationships and projects flourish. So, you know, we see in the you know next uh, year or so uh, where we want to continue uh, focusing uh, just in uh, mostly, I'll say, in South Korea. Uh, Japan has been a very interesting market. Um, we've had some strong uh, demands of our technology and a lot of interest of DPASS and what we're doing with our digital certificates there. So we have a couple of sales members that's uh, talking with different enterprises and, and actually making some very good progress there. And of course, US is uh, where we have actual, where I'll, I'm actually at and we, Ricky and I are at. So um, obviously we're talking to different enterprises here and getting them sharing our knowledge and experience and trying to do a couple of uh, work here with, with as well but you know i think what's very interesting is that uh, we believe that korean market alone is uh, large enough and i think our token value um, kind of reflects that i think um, it's our 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 strength is our is our is, is korea and uh, but we believe that there's strong upside, for example, for for in the U.S. where you know actually for a public blockchain, there's very strong uh, you know community here in the U.S. So um, there's been a lot of activities and buildings and a lot of DApps and DAOs that are interested in building on top of the Icon Network. So we believe that is actually the upside of uh, the Icon Network for tomorrow. Uh, maybe Ricky could add a couple more points. Yeah, I think um, just on the back of like decentralization, I, I feel like very uh, optimistic on sort of our brand and exposure and how uh, the community is going to be incentivized to uh, work alongside us in pushing uh, adoption of icon technology. Um, if you were to look at uh, just the list of uh, P reps that are onboarded right now, you would see a very good like. Uh, geographical distribution uh, that I think um, will help as we continue to, to build out not only our presence in Korea and, and strengthen that market, but also start to uh, explore areas in and around Asia and then into the US, Africa, and some of these other markets that are uh, sort of less uh, penetrated at this point. And we see that those opportunities uh, can be sort of very high growth opportunities and we look forward to uh, seeing what the P reps can do, working with them uh, to sort of engage the community. And, uh, uh, you know, we're very excited about uh, sort of the next uh, year and a half. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to downplay the opportunities in the enterprise space uh, across Asia and in the U.S. as well. I mean, we 
Um, again, uh, there are a lot of interesting activities that we can't share today, but um, there's been a very strong interest in our technology and the things that we've been working with, and hopefully we'll be able to bring some of that into more, um, I guess, more progress, be able to share that with you uh, later. Great. Uh, you know, maybe we could actually backpedal on that, on that topic too. I think that there's, there's, you know, maybe you can speak to the trends that you've seen with, with respect to the blockchain adoption and, and kind of digitalization of, of money and assets in, in Korea and the surrounding countries. It seems like, you know, through a lot of the various different MOUs that you formed and the adoption of Icon Loop on the enterprise side, it seems like, you know, perhaps enterprises out of South Korea and, and its neighbors or are, are, are seem to be, you know, more welcoming perhaps than some other regions. So, you know, what are there, can you kind of speak to some of the trends that you've seen in that, in that market and the surrounding neighbors? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's our expertise. So, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I mean, the fact is, um, you know, I think anyone who's been in the blockchain and crypto space um, have seen that there's been a lot of uh, investments in the crypto space going into Korea. So you see exchanges that are, uh, building uh, a presence in Korea. We have other blockchain projects that is building a presence in Korea. So Korea has been a big interest and uh, rightfully so because, you know, Korea has always been known as an early adopter of new technologies. I um, mean, Korea has very high mobile penetration rate. The Korea population is highly dense. Uh, Seoul Metropolitan has about 10 to 20 million people coming in and out. Uh, Koreans are very highly educated and obviously it's one of the top economies with some of the largest conglomerates. And you see large conglomerates such as Samsung and our partner Line, and even uh, the, the largest city, Seoul Metropolitan Government, that are very enthusiastic about building use cases for both public and public blockchain. So, you know, on the business side, on the enterprise side, you know, everything I've mentioned, the partners that we've worked with, it's been very smooth and uh, a lot of excitement there. And even more importantly, the retail market is very ready. So if you go to Korea and you talk to, I'm sure you've heard of reports of, you know, even uh, grandmas know what Bitcoin is or university students are getting into uh, purchasing uh, cryptocurrency. So, uh, Unlike many other markets, the retail market is very, very strong. And at once, it was one of the largest volume drivers of the exchanges there uh, around the world. So, um, so, you know, I think that's what makes Korea quite unique versus other countries. Um, so on top of that, um, you know, there's so much excitement. But one thing that is sort of lagging is actually the regulations for crypto. So I think... Um, Korean regulation is, I wouldn't say is lagging too behind a lot of the other regions. I will say it is lagging very similar to many other countries where regulators cannot really determine or make decisions on how to regulate this industry. So they're still in the research mode and trying to come up with ways to, um, you know, govern or manage this, this industry. So I think once the regulations are, are set, and once we have proper um, you know, regulation in place, we, I think that we'll see much more activities uh, here in the future, which I believe will greatly benefit uh, the ICON project as well. There's been a lot of uh, you know, initiatives that the ICON Foundation has, has pushed forward to kind of grow adoption and, and, and incentivize development and participation in, in the network. Um, and you've highlighted kind of a few of those programs in, in the slide deck. And I know in the past also you've, you've discussed repurchasing uh, ICX and potentially even airdrops. Is there anything on, on that front as far as, you know, upcoming initiatives that we can keep an eye out for, for, you know, further developing uh, or incentivizing adoption and growth and, and ultimately contribution towards the network in the foreseeable future? Yeah. I think um, maybe Rick could chime in here as well, but let me start. Um, we're just, we were both about to jump on the question. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think, you, you know, what I'd like to do these days is look directly in our community and community activities. Um, some of our PREP candidates that are running to be uh, elected are 
actual game developers and they're very excited about our network and they're ready to uh, contribute to, to growing this network by building out games, for example. And there are other community members that's willing to build out other applications and uh, dev tools in order to make it easier for more, uh, you know, good activities to happen in, in the ICON network. So I think um, a lot of these news will come in sporadically going forward, whereas before everything was controlled by the ICON Foundation, uh, where, where we control the roadmap, we control the development schedule, like we develop, we, we control our partners. But now as we decentralize more and more, the ICON Foundation and my role is to actually take a step back and let the network uh, do, do what it's supposed to do, which is grow, grow in different manners uh, than what, was, what we actually intend. So, you know, I think that's what's, what we want to see in the blockchain network is seeing a lot of active members contributing. So um, I think going forward, you will see many new games uh, that will be coming out, many DeFi products that will coming out of the network. And a lot of this is something that I wouldn't be working directly, but uh, these are the news that will be coming out from the ICON network. And I think uh, just to sort of piggyback on that, maybe I can provide a little more color on like developer initiatives that we have sort of ongoing stateside. Um, so as part of uh, ICX Station, which is an incubator and accelerator platform, we've uh, signed on a couple of uh, sort of hacking uh, groups. So Major League Hackers, which is one of the largest uh, uh, workshop providers in the States. Uh, is going to be a partner and they're going to be adding icon uh, to sort of their list of schools uh, to be uh, helping developers on board in addition to that we'll be working with another group uh, uh, run out of mouse bell uh, which is uh, a bay area focused developer shop and they'll be onboarding icon to uh, continue to grow our developer base here stateside and then outside of that just uh, sort of uh, broadening our, our exposure across u.s uh, institutions. We have blockchain at Berkeley. Uh, as many of you may know, like Berkeley, uh, Berkeley is where men went to school, but uh, it's a, a leading U.S. In, uh, US uh, institution. Um, they are a top 22 P rep currently based on uh, uh, voting as of today. Um, so we expect to, to be working alongside that group uh, quite often uh, in growing the ICON community uh, locally in California as well. Terrific, thanks. Well, Ricky and Min, I think we're coming up on the, uh, the top of the hour here. Thank you so much for the time and the presentation and, and taking all the questions from the audience. Uh, apologies to those of you who asked questions that we didn't have time to get to. Um, perhaps Ricky and Min, we can have you guys back on in the future and we can uh, give an, an update for the overall progress and answer some more questions. Great, that'd be great. This was, awesome. this was great. Thank you, for, uh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone. Take care.